Sure. You know, on my porch I have a wide variety of plants, like this palm tree, <laughs> which as long as I keep it protected from the direct sunlight, it grows and keeps getting bigger and who knows, maybe one day I'll have a giant palm out of it, because I have a couple others. that I'm counting on. <laughs> that way I don't have to purchase any of those plants that you see in stores that, you know, are so big and they cost 50 bucks or 100 bucks or whatever they may be. But I tend to get these little starts and grow them up into what they become on this porch. And each one of them, according to what they need, whether light or water, you know, some of them, most of them grow, and my wife prevents me from overwatering them because I really overwater a lot. But they uh, each grow at their own pace, in their own pot, in their own place. And God does that with each one of us, is that each one of us grow at a different place in our lives. Sometimes we go off on a tangent, sometimes we don't. Sometimes we feel like a nut, sometimes we don't. Sometimes it's a choice of growing a little bit in, say, one denomination and then suddenly discovering that God wants you someplace else and you decide to leave that, to go into a different place or pot because God wants to expand your root base, you know, and cause you to grow even bigger or maybe he wants to trim you back like a bonsai and keep you in a small pot, you know, but you are so firmly rooted and so aged and matured in that beautiful construct that God has made you that you're the admiration of all those around you. And so each one of us grow and move and develop in a different way according to his purposes and plan, even though we may not understand it always and may not even realize what we are. Because you see, that palm tree that I look at doesn't know it's a palm tree. It just knows that it's a plant. <laughs> and I'm not even sure it knows that. It probably just knows that it's creation. And that all of creation groans in travail waiting for the revelation of the sons of God. So it has some kind of consciousness of God. And it reflects that in its ability to interact with God. And so it responds to what I do. Whether I speak to it or whether I water it or whether I give it plant food or you know, whether I cursed it and it dies or whether I bless it and it grows, you know. Um, it has the ability to respond. And so God created all of us in that way. We have the ability to respond to him or not. And you have the choice to grow or not as you determine. But God wants you to mature. And in so saying, he speaks to us every day in helping us to develop a way of communicating with him whether directly or indirectly, whether circumstantial or whether verbal or audible. In Tozer, there are no shortcuts to a godly life. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Philippians 3.14 The cause of retarded spiritual growth or spiritual progress are many. It would not be accurate to ascribe the trouble to one single fault. One there is, however, which is so universal that it may easily be the main cause and failure to give time to the cultivation of the knowledge of God. Oh, and that is failure to give time to the cultivation of the knowledge of God. The temptation is to make our relation to God judicial instead of personal. It's often easier to keep God at a distance than it is to bring God near. We always want to regulate God's laws rather than hear God speak. Because, see, oftentimes people will take a legalistic point of view in religion because they don't want a personal interaction with the lawgiver himself. You see, a judge, whether you know it or not, literally can set aside the verdict of a jury. A judge can determine the course of the direction that a trial may go. 
a judge in olden days, maybe not in modern times, was able to even determine the law itself and how it applied to a given situation. And so he was able to adjudicate or state what is the facts of the case. And so in a lot of ways, people made that more important than actually knowing the person himself. And so God wants us to develop a personal relationship to be godly, not a religious relationship to the law to become godliness. The temptation, the young believer becomes aware of an act performed rather than of a living savior to be followed and adored. It is easier to do what we think he said than to actually know what he's saying to us today. The Apostle Paul was anything but an advocate of the once done automatic school of Christianity. Once saved, always saved, run off and do it your way. He devoted his whole life to the art of knowing Jesus. We may as well accept it. There is no shortcut to sanctity. To be sanctified and set apart is to walk apart from the world and to walk with Jesus daily. Your choice is yours to make. Are you sanctified or are you <laughs> worldified? Even as the crises that come in the spiritual life are usually the result of long periods of thought and prayerful meditation. As the wonder grows more and more dazzling, there is likely to occur a crisis of revolutionizing proportions. God will bring you to an interaction where he is either becoming real or you're becoming a relationship that's distant. But that crisis is related to what has gone before in the preparation of waiting upon God, being still to hear his voice, being willing to know his direction, being, being willing to respond to his call. It may come as a sudden sweet explosion, an uprushing of a tide that has been increasing its pressure within until we can no longer contain it. A lot of people get carried away by what they feel each day in relationship to having the Holy Spirit inside and so sometimes they create and emote that more than they develop from the Holy Spirit that personal intimacy with the knowledge of God in a personal and choiceful way to know Him in His beauty and His holiness as He is here, as He is in us, as He is around us, as He is about us, as He works through us because God wants that for us. He wants us to know the Father and He wants to shatter our dimensional restrictions of not being able to see God so that we would know God in a more intimate and personal way than we ever have before. And so you see, godliness is meant to be to live a godly life, to come to a conclusion of knowing God, not of becoming righteous. That's not the reason for godliness. The reason for a godly life is to come into personal contact with a living God.